The New York Islanders fall short with another poor effort in Tampa, but they now face a must-win game tonight in Philly. Plus, all that line juggling by Patrick Waugh. Is it good or bad for this team? We've got all that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. So much to discuss on today's episode, but first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you can email us at lockedonislanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, We're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. You can also follow the show on X at Locked On Isles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Isles all season long, and I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis, and it's great to talk Islanders hockey with you game time, or any time. Another disappointing effort by the Islanders Saturday in Tampa, and they fall to the Lightning by a score of 4-1. to one. And look, the Patrick Waugh made a decision, and that decision was to go with Semyon Varlamov as the goaltender after he played well uh, against Florida, And obviously, we know Ilya Sorokin has been struggling lately. Uh, He's on a personal losing streak. So I think going with Varley was the right decision. And I think the play of Semyon Varlamov demonstrated that. He faced 39 shots. The Islanders, of course, giving up 40 shots on goal throughout the course of the game. But one of them was an empty netter. So... 39 shots by uh, faced by Varley. He made 36 saves. That's a 923 save percentage. And essentially what Varlamov did in the game was keep his team in it, especially in the first period when the Islanders were just absolutely being dominated by the Lightning. And yeah, the Islanders scored the first goal and then the Islanders give up two goals in 35 seconds in the last six minutes of the period. And it, it really, after the first period, shot attempts at one point late in the period were 35-7 to seven in favor of Tampa Bay. The Islanders just spending nearly the entire period in their own zone. They give up a power play goal. Surprise, surprise. But overall... Just a dominant period by the Bolts, and the Islanders stayed in it because of Kyle Palmieri's lucky goal. It was sort of a bounce off one of the defensemen in front, and the goaltending of Semyon Varlamov. And, you know, that 2-1 to one margin held up. It was, it was ironic because in the first period, the Islanders could not keep up with the Lightning's speed. And what we saw was one of the team's weaknesses, one of their struggles, the lack of team speed, the the need to be perfect positionally when facing a skilled and, and speedy team like the Lightning, who is hitting on all cylinders since the trade deadline. They have really improved their game. Uh, that was the problem in the in the first period. In the second period, The Islanders kind of flipped the switch and played better hockey. Pretty much controlled, you know, they had a lot more scoring chances. 
than the Lightning did in the second period, which is usually when the Islanders struggle the most. And yet another problem that this team has had almost all year raised its ugly head, and that was the inability to finish. The Islanders had plenty of shots, plenty of chances, and just couldn't put the puck behind Andre Vasilevsky. Net result, still at the end of 40 minutes, it's a two-to-one hockey game. And then I think a third thing that we've seen from this team far too often this year happening in the third period, and that is you're going into the third period. It's a very important game. You know, you're in this situation. You're down by a goal. If you win the period, you'll get at least a point. And yet just 21 seconds into that third period, the Islanders give up a goal. And how many times, either in the first minute or two of a period or the last minute or two of a period, have we seen this Islanders team give up an untimely and damaging goal that really hurts their scoring chances? Stamkos gets his 30th. That happens again. And the Islanders end up being down three to one. And then, of course, late in the game, we have late in the game with a little less than four minutes left down by two goals. Patrick Waugh pulling the usual, you know, having the goalie head to the bench for the sixth attacker. And since other teams are actually better at scoring empty net goals than the Islanders, it doesn't work. Look, I get the theory behind it. It's a desperation move. The Islanders, as I said, only had one goal in this game, and it was off, you know, uh, it was a situation where Kyle Palmieri's shot deflected home off uh, either the stick or the skate of a defenseman in front of the goal. So I get the idea behind it, but it is, let's face it, a desperation, low percentage move that Patrick Waugh is willing to make. And... You know, again, the Islanders just not playing well enough as a team to get the job done and to get the two points. Now, the only good news is that in addition to the Islanders not winning, uh, most of the teams over the holiday weekend that the Islanders are battling for a playoff spot with are not winning. So Detroit, Washington. You know, Philadelphia, these teams maybe got a point or zero points, depending on uh, the team, keeping the Islanders in the playoff hunt. And it's it's wild when you look at it that a team like the Islanders can be struggling as much as they are two, seven and one in their last 10 games. And yet they are still just five points out of a playoff berth with nine games to go. And yet the Islanders have two games in hand on the Flyers. They're also five points behind the Capitals, who also have 82 points. But the uh, Capitals and Islanders are even in games played. So overall, what we're looking at is, in my mind, a must-win game tonight for the New York Islanders against the Philadelphia Flyers. It's a 7 o'clock Eastern time start uh, in Philadelphia. And remember, you can hear all of this game, every minute of it, with the Islanders hometown broadcast. If you go to the SiriusXM, go to the SXM app and do a search for Islanders. We will preview that game a little bit later on in the show. We will also have our hero and go to the game and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the line changes and juggling that Patrick Waugh has been doing and whether or not that really helps or hurts the team. Plus for our Islanders birthday of the day, a forward who was with the team in the late 1990s and very early 2000s. So let's see if you can guess Who that is, we've got all that and a whole lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Regardless of where we are in the current standings, I want to remind you 
that you could win big playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. It's the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. And Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Barzal, McDavid, or McKinnon will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Islander fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. Use promo code Locked On NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? We'll make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24 7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, and it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hero and go to the game in Tampa. It's not too tough uh, as far as the hero goes. I got to go with Semyon Varlamov, keeping this team in a game that they really had no business being in facing literally a shooting gallery in that first period and to have the team still be in the game at that point. Uh, the only reason that entering the third period, the Islanders had a chance was because of the outstanding play of Varlamov. So to me, Varley is the hero of the game and, you know, go to the game right now. I'm going to go with Noah Dobson, although there were a lot of choices. Dauber, a team worst minus three. He also had, uh, you know, another collision. We had another play where two Islanders collide, this time in their own zone. It's it's getting embarrassing. Uh, the Islanders looking like a, a cars in a demolition derby rather than hockey players. Although, hey, there's progress uh, in, in the last game. Uh, against Florida, it was only there were three players colliding against Tampa Bay. It was only two. So I, I guess that's a small step forward. But Dauber, no points. He was a minus three in this game. And uh, again, just continues to sort of struggle in his own zone with the defensive play. Look, there are a lot of players I could have gone with, unfortunately, uh, in this game. But to me, Noah Dobson, who has not been as productive offensively and continues to struggle defensively as of late, is going to be my GOAT of the game. You know, Patrick Waugh has been changing up the lines and the defense pairings for the Islanders a lot recently. And before this game against Tampa Bay, he really went to a very different lineup. Uh, he had a top line of Brock Nelson centering Casey Sezikis and Kyle Palmieri. Then he had Matt Barzal, Anders Lee, and Hudson fashing on the second line. J.G. Pajot, Pierre Engvall, and Bo Horvat on the third line, with Horvat now playing the wing. A and then Kyle McLean, Matt Martin, and Cal Clutterbuck, the only sort of predictable fourth line. And then you had Adam Pellick and Noah Dobson. Mike Riley and Ryan Polak and Alexander Romanov and Robert Bortuzzo as the defense pairing. But you know what? It didn't stay that way. And, you know, why after the first period, he puts Sezikis with Barzal and Fashing, Engvall with Nelson and Palmieri, Lee with Pajot and Horvat, and again, leaves the fourth line together. You also had Ryan Pollock and Adam Pellick reunited, Riley with Bortuzzo, and Dobson with Romanoff after the first period. So, you know, even within a game, you're seeing radical lineup changes by Patrick Waugh. 
And I, I think there's a number of reasons for this, and they are related. Look, to me, the fact that Patrick Waugh is making constant line combination changes is an act of desperation. This team has struggled big time lately to score goals, to be consistent offensively. You know, when you had the super line together of Brock Nelson, uh, Bo Horvat, and Matthew Barzal, you, you, you have a situation where, you know, that's great, but where's the depth? And, you know, the depth is always important because you can't be relying solely on one line to get the job done. And, you know, this team, in their last three games, they have scored a total of four goals. And that's not going to get it done. Now, you, you know, you get a win because you beat Florida three to two, but then you lose four nothing to New Jersey and four to one to Tampa. So, you know, you're being outscored 10 to three in those games. It's not enough. And when you add the struggles on the power play, uh, it, you know, you see why Patrick Waugh is desperately trying to change things up. And we did see the team do better in the second period with the second lineup that I mentioned over the first period with the lineup that we started the game with where they really were being dominated in that first period. But overall, I think what Patrick Waugh is doing is essentially saying, not, not saying it out loud, but sort of sending a message that this team right now does not have the depth offensively and the talent offensively to run my system the best way possible. The, the the roster that has been put together, while there is definitely talent there, it has flaws, it lacks depth, it lacks speed, and it needs more skill. And I think we clearly saw that against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And, you know, if you compare the two teams and you go down the lineup, uh, I mean, Nikita Kucherov right now in a class by himself. Anthony Sorelli had a big game. You have Stamkos. You have Anthony Duclair, Braden Point. You have difference makers up and down that Tampa Bay lineup, whereas the Islanders do not even have six legitimate top six forwards to put in their lineup. So, you know, Patrick Watt, yeah, it does it hurt team continuity? Does it prevent? Uh, the players from developing the chemistry you'd like them to have. Because if you have, you know, permanent lines, there are times when you know, if I put the puck here, my line mate who I've played with for the last three months, I know he's going to be there. So you lose that chemistry. You lose that uh, uh, ability to, to really know your line mates. That, that gets hurt by this shuffling, but when you can't put together, you know, a legitimate top six, two lines, and you can't get scoring depth from your bottom six consistently enough, you got to try something to spark this team. And that's what Patrick Waugh is trying to do. And he's trying to find combinations that will click a little bit and maybe keep guys on their toes and I think he's also basically sending a message to the GM that I, I need more tools to work with if my system is going to be more effective and work to its maximum capacity. Now, will Lou Lamorello get the memo? Will he actually do something about it this offseason? And doing something about it may indeed include stepping down or retiring or uh, moving up to a, a, a different position and letting either Patrick Waugh or someone else become the new GM. We don't know that. We have to see, you know, how that plays out. But changes are going to be made or need to be made if you don't want to see all this constant line juggling and if you do want to see a more competitive team out there on the ice under Patrick Waugh. 
All right, we have got more to get to on today's show. We're going to touch on tonight's must-win game. In fact, pretty close to must-win in regulation game against the Philadelphia Flyers. Plus, we'll have our Islanders' birthday of the day. All that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel's making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet the tourney, Major League Baseball, the NBA, NHL, and so much more. And look, Islander fans, check out the odds and the prop bets that you can make tonight when the Islanders have this must-win game against the Flyers, you want to see, you know, Matt Barzal, how many points he'll get in the game, or Bo Horvat, check out all the odds at FanDuel.com. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a big win. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free TV, the Free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the Free Fire TV channels app. So tonight, must-win game for the New York Islanders. 7 o'clock Eastern time, Islanders and Flyers. As I mentioned, five points separate these two teams, but the Islanders have two games in hand. You win this game, and you are within three points of the Flyers with the two games in hand. Lose it in regulation. You're seven points back and fading fast with only eight games coming after. So. 7 o'clock Eastern, big game for the New York Islanders. And remember, you can hear every minute of this game with the Islanders hometown broadcast on Sirius XM. Just go to the SXM app and do a search for Islanders. The Flyers, they are a team that is slumping right now. Four losses in a row, including losses to some struggling teams, Montreal and Chicago. And they were outscored 9-2 to two in those last two games. Uh, So clearly, you know, this is a Flyers team that, uh, and you can hear more about this on the Monday edition of Locked On NHL, but this is a Flyers team that seems to be very tired right now. And that is certainly uh, something that the Islanders need to take advantage of. Uh, Right now, Samuel Urson is the goalie since Carter Hart left the team. And uh, Urson, 21, 16, and 7 on the year, a 279 goals against and an 892 save percentage. He is almost certainly going to be the starting goalie. Thomas Konechny leading the team right now with 31 goals and 64 points. Owen Tippett, 27 goals. Joel Faraby with 21 and Tyson Forster with 20. But this is more of a balanced scoring team than a team that is going to be putting up big points with their first line. In fact, right now, no flyer uh, near the, you know, who's played a lot this season has a point a game. They are 22nd in the league in goals scored and 20th in the league in goals against. So again, uh, like the Islanders, this is a team that struggles with consistency. Special teams, it's interesting. The power play is last in the league going up against the Islanders penalty kill, which is also last in the league. So something has to give uh, tonight in this game. But the penalty kill is good for the Flyers. They're third in the league, 83.5% success at killing them off. So the Islanders power play will have, you know, it's it's work cut out for them. Taking a look at the line combinations that the Flyers had in their last game, the top line, Morgan Frost, Owen Tippett, and Travis Konechny. The second line is Ryan Poling at center, Tyson Foster 
to his left, Garnett Hathaway to his right, Scott Lawton, a veteran, centers the third line, Joel Farabee and Bobby Brink are his wingers. And then Sean Couturier is the fourth line pivot with Noah Cates and Dennis Garianov flanking him. On the blue line, Cam York and Travis Sanheim are the top pair. Nick Sealer and Eric Johnson, the second pair. And Igor Zamula and Adam Ginning are the third pair. The goaltenders, we mentioned Samuel Urson. The backup is now Ivan Fedotov, who just signed with the team on Friday after playing in the KHL. He got out of his KHL contract. He's six foot eight. He has never played a game in the NHL. So I doubt we see him as anything but the backup. And only I think we see him if Urson is just dreadful and the Flyers are really trailing by a large amount. Lots of injuries right now. We mentioned Carter Hart suspended from the team. But then you have Ryan Ellis, Rasmus Ristolainen, and Jamie Drysdale all on IR. So injuries also a reason for the Flyers' struggles as of late. And the Islanders are going to have to, I think, you know what? One thing that I think is going to be important in this game, you have two teams that have truly been struggling as of late. I mean, the Flyers are 3-5-2 and two in their last 10. The Islanders 2-7-1. and one. But Flyers have lost four in a row. Confidence is going to be important. Whoever scores first in this game, I think we'll have a big advantage. I think it's Urson against Sorokin is the most likely goaltending matchup. And, you know, this is back-to-back games for the Islanders coming up uh, Monday and Tuesday with the Blackhawks coming to town. Tuesday, got to get at least three points out of these two games and realistically four. Uh, and beating Philly in regulation going to be critical for the New York Islanders. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And this is a tough one, uh, but uh, Sunday was the 48th birthday of former Islanders goalie, excuse me, winger, Mike Watt. Watt, a native of Seaforth, Ontario, a second round pick of the Edmonton Oilers back in 1994. Spent three years at Michigan State, made his NHL debut in 1997-98 with Edmonton but joined the Islanders for the 98-99 season and basically played uh, one and a half seasons with the Islanders. Uh, His biggest year, 98-99, 75 games, eight goals, 25 points, 12 penalty minutes. And, you know, a lot more of a bottom six, two-way kind of a forward for this team. We go back and look at one of Mike Watt's better games as an Islander, November 21st. 1998 in Nashville, Islanders taking on the Predators. Tommy Sallow, the goalie for the Islanders. Mike Dunham, uh, a name Islander fans should know well, in goal for Nashville. And Mike Watt opens the scoring for the Islanders in this one, his third of the year, from Ted Donato and David Harlock, just two minutes and one second into the game. Then with the Islanders up two to one early in the second period, Watt sets up the late Gino Ojic for a goal. Ted Donato also assisting on that one. The Islanders go on to a 6-3 to three win over the Nashville Predators. Tommy Sallow, 39 saves in a wide open game where the Islanders had 42 shots, uh, uh, gave up 42 shots, but took 40. And for Mike Watt, a goal, an assist. He was a plus two and uh, basically had three shots on goal in 14 minutes and seven seconds. For his career, Watt played in 157 NHL games, only played uh, for Nashville and Carolina after leaving the Islanders, then played in Russia and then in the minor leagues before hanging up the skates after 07-08. 15 career NHL goals, 41 points, did not appear in an NHL playoff game. But Mike Watt, 48 on Sunday. He is our Islanders' birthday of the day. Thanks for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We'll have our key takeaways from this game against the Flyers, a critical game. 
Plus, we'll preview Tuesday's home game against the Chicago Blackhawks. So make sure you join us for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.